Five, origins of rationalism. Lewis B. Wright in Barefoot in Arcadia tells of a black preacher in his boyhood years who presided at the funeral of a man who had died outside the faith. The man was described thus by the preacher, quote, He was not what you would call a good man because he never joined the church, but he was a mighty respectable sinner. Such an attitude has deep roots within the church. Man outside Christ is, in terms of scripture, a fallen and evil creature at enmity with God, and yet many churchmen have seen him as basically a good man, needing only Christ to round out his life. In the medieval era, this extra thing was called the Donum Superadditum. Without it, the natural man possessed many good qualities which grace brought to perfection. This perspective was present even among the Puritans. Thus, Thomas Hooker described, quote, the civil man, end quote, as a paragon of public moral virtue, a man, quote, outwardly just, temperate, chaste, careful to follow his worldly business, will not hurt so much as his neighbor's dog, pays every man his own, and lives of his own. No drunkard, adulterer, or quarreler loves to live peaceably and quietly among his neighbors, end quote. Even though hell-bound, lacking Christ, together with this, there was often a favorable view of reason. Such opinions were common in the medieval era and in the Reformation and its churches. What was the origin of such thinking? Given the plain speaking of Scripture on man's sin and depravity, it seems strange that this should be so. The problem was that most people knew non-Christians within Christendom. These non-Christians took on the coloration of the Christian community. Just as to carry on business in an English-speaking country or community, one needs to know English. So within a Christian context, the non-Christian has, until recent years, taken on the coloration of the community. For example, for a long time homosexuals were, quote, in the closet, end quote, with respect to their vice. Publicly, they were a part of the general community, its churches, organizations and activities. Society as a result for a long time did not know what a natural man is. Some still do not know. Given this situation, too many churchmen assumed that people are what they profess to be rather than what God in the Bible tells us they are. To insist on a biblical doctrine of man is therefore seen as illegitimate when the, quote, public evidence, end quote, indicates otherwise. During the civil rights movement of the early 1960s, one businessman moved to compassion began to fill a plant with minorities he viewed as disadvantaged. He was soon outraged because his workers, hired because of race, not character or competence, took him for a fool and they exploited his attitude to the limit. The facade created by compliance with a Christian culture is rapidly disintegrating but it still governs the minds of too many churchmen. Rationalism has been largely abandoned outside of church circles, both modernist and evangelical. Man's fall, according to scripture, is total, affecting all of his being. Even in the songs of biblical worship, that is, Psalm 14 and 53, we are told of the ungodly that none do good, good, Every one of them is gone back. They are altogether become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. End quote. Psalm 53.3 When songs of Israel include such statements, we know that this was a basic doctrine. But churchmen are no more faithful to the Bible than were the Jews. They do, of course, proudly retain Jesus in the church, but only after remaking him in their own image. All too early, churchmen began to see reason as the image of God and man, or at least the image of angels. The Westminster Catechism made clear, however, with biblical texts provided, that the image of God and man is knowledge, righteousness or justice, holiness and dominion, Genesis 1, 26-28, Colossians 3, 10, Ephesians 4, 24. The relevant texts for the rationalists are in Plato, not the Bible.